So for the uh, eyebrows, what I've done is I've already gone ahead and created all of the targets necessary. I uh, currently have six targets um, for right and six for left. I'm just run through them here quickly as to what I've created. We've got brow up one, and on the right, you can see what I've done is I've taken the uh, outer edge of the brow up, nice soft selection, and pushed it up. Brow two is the middle of the brow uh, going up and pulling some of the outer and the uh, and the inner with it. Nice soft one. And then brow three up is just the inner going up um, in the middle of the eye, leaving the outer down. And then the same thing um, the other way around. Uh, so we've got um, uh, several here. We've got brow um, down, and it's going down in the corner, down in the middle, and down on the inside. And same for uh, for the left side, of course. And so the difference with how we're going to have to set this up now is, is that if we want to have this control so that as it goes up in the middle, it pushes up only this target here, which is the middle up. And then we push it to the side, we'll get the uh, outer. And when we push it up and to the uh, other side, we'll get the inner. Now. The issue there is, is that if we're only tracking the local y-axis up and down on this, what will happen is, is that um, y doesn't matter whether it's there or there or there, it's all the same value for y. So you'll end up driving all three of them up. So what we're going to have to do is we're actually going to have to um, drive it back, some of them back down again. So then when we push it one way or the other, essentially what we do is we've driven them all up but then we're going to drive them back down on another layer so that when it's in the middle, it only has the um, uh, this one at, at a full 100%. And then if it's on the inside, it'll have this one at the full 100% and, and so on. Okay, so I'll show you how I'm going to do that. Again, I'm going to go through and I'm going to add all these to the Morpher modifier. And just say pick and start at the top. And there is a, a, a pick multiples, um, but you have to, it, I, I still find it easier going through and adding them as I want to add them, and in the specific order that I want to add them in. Something else I should note, uh, note about uh, uh, dealing with Morpher is be careful that you don't actually uh, end up um, adding two Morph targets to one channel. It is possible. There's a progressive Morph list here, and if you'll actually see, if I say pick from scene and add another one, you'll see that it's actually added two targets. What this is for, I'm just going to say delete uh, in a minute and get rid of that, is that what you can do is you can actually have um, it set up so that as the spinner goes up, it reaches the first target at a certain percentage of the actual target. So when this, in this case, when this reaches 50, uh, it'll, reach 50 uh, it'll reach this target at 100%, at 50% of the range. And then 100% of the range, it'll reach this target. And that way, you can actually get curves um, out of your target. So you can actually do jaw morphs and actually get a bit of a, a roundness out of it. It works fairly well. Um, it works actually quite well for things like eyelids. I wouldn't do a jaw with it myself. So now that I've added those uh, targets, what we're going to need to do is we're going to go into um, track view. And I've actually uh, hidden the track view uh, the, uh, the key area, you can do that if you go into uh, Show Elements Key Window. Uh, and I, I often have uh, a track view set up this way, just so I can see all my controllers. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say Selected Only. And I'm going to pick the Ogre and go in and find the Morpher modifier and locate all of the targets that we've just added. Now in order to be able to drive a single ch um, track with multiple um, rea reaction masters, you can't just do it directly to it because you can only have this connected to one thing. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to use list controller. So I'm going to say assign controller float list and I'm going to open them all. 
And I want to make sure there's a, um, a float. I'm not sure this is actually 100% necessary, but I just tend to do it. And I want to add the Bezier float to the available track. So now what we've got is we've got two controllers controlling each track. What this is good for now is, is that we're going to drive them all up on the first controller, and then we're going to control which one is actually seen by driving down on the side-to-side -side action on the x-axis of the control, the second controller in any given one. So we can, although the first controller on the first three, let's say, on the up, brow up, will actually be at 100. These ones may be at negative 100 values, pulling the values back down again. I'm just going to minimize that track view there, and I'll get into showing you what I mean by this. Let's go to the Reaction Manager again. I'm going to say uh, Show Selected, which is going to show nothing. Don't need my uh, curves at the bottom. And let's add both of the exposition and the, oops, didn't want that, the Y position. So we've got our two drivers uh, in here. And now what we need to do is we need to add what we're going to control in, in each of them. And for essentially all of them are going to be uh, the same. We're going to add all of them to, to both of them so we know what's, uh, what's going on. It's just sort of easier that way. I wish there was a bit of easier way to add multiple targets. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take, in this case, um, Oh, sorry, we should be on the uh, Y here. Let's do the up and down first. So Y is the, um, the up and down. So that's going to be brow up and brow down, essentially. So let's do the Y first. So back into... And there's the brow up one, and there is the uh, Bezier float, the first one in the list. Um, I'm going to take each of the first ones in the list and add them all first. And they're going to be their, our overall drivers uh, up and down. And then we're going to add the, uh, the ones that are going to countermand those into the x-axis. So I'm going to add all the first ones here. And float. And the third one. And I guess I really should have written a script for this and shown you how to do that. Because uh, quite frankly, that's how I would have gone about uh, about doing it all. Whenever possible, mundane tasks. Learn to write the code for it. Your first time writing the code might take you longer than just going ahead and doing it. But if you can, it is uh, the best way to go about doing it. Now I'm going to go and clean out all the extra uh, states because each time you add one, it adds a state for it. So I'm just going to clean them all out. Uh, with the uh, Y uh, selected and this state currently selected, I'm going to click on the uh, button here that's uh, got the plus sign beside it. And what it'll do is it'll add all of the um, slave uh, uh, tracks into the uh, state. And there we go. We've got them all on one now. Now what we need to do is we need to do the same thing with the X. We're going to pick all the second tracks for these. Since I mentioned it, I figured I should actually add uh, the other um, reactions to Reaction Manager for the uh, for this control via script and uh, make it real easy that way. Uh, we already have the uh, the master in here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop open a Mac script. We can actually use it for when we set up the other side, anyways. We want to loop through uh, several controllers uh, on the Morpher uh, modifier and add them all at once. So we need a for loop to start with. Now, how many iterations that's going to move through, we need to know. So I'm just going to go down, pick the main object here, go down to Morpher, and uh, find the uh, brow up. And that starts at uh, number 13 down to number 18. So we're going to say for, uh, we'll use i, i equals 13 to 18 do. And of course, that will make i equal to 13, the number 13 to the number 18 for each time it goes through the loop. We're now going to make 
a reaction controller. RC is just going to be our variable that's going to store it. So I'm going to say equals, and now we need to know what we're adding that uh, reaction controller to. So it'll be these tracks, but not just these tracks directly, because we actually um, we put on it. I'm just going to go down and just open it up here. We actually put uh, on here uh, a list controller, so we need to make sure we get the second controller in the list and not the first. So uh, let's grab this by name. I'm going to cut and paste this. So uh, dollar sign uh, tells us that we're working with an object in in Max. So uh, the over body dot morpher, and I'm going to do this just actually typing in the number. We're going to replace 13 with the uh, letter I. Uh, but just so you can see it, uh, this currently will return the actual uh, target, this first target back that we're dealing with. So it's actually re uh, returning that track right there. We need this track down here. So uh, the next thing to do is say dot controller. And if I evaluate that line to there, that's returning the float list. That is this list actually and we need to get which uh, controller in it, and it'll be the second one, so number two. So that's getting the Bezier float controller that's in here, and we actually want to state that it's the controller we need directly. And what we want to do is, on that controller, because it's currently a Bezier float, we need to make it a uh, um, float reactor controller, so I happen to know that's what it's called. Look, uh, controllers up in Max script, and you'll see what it'll tell you what the uh, um, uh, controllers are called. And if I just evaluate this, you'll see that it actually returns a float reaction controller. So when that line evaluates now, it'll add a float reaction controller to the second uh, uh, track in the list controllers. That's going to change this back to a letter I now, so that when the a loop goes through, it'll go through number 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 and do the same thing to it. Once we've done that, we need to take the reaction controller and we have to tell it what it's going to react to. So in this case, it's going to be the um, this object here. So I'm just going to copy that. I'm going to say, and the command for dealing with reaction uh, manager and setting up uh, reaction states is react to um, the next thing we list, sorry, it's not that, is the controller that's going to be controlled, the, basically the slave controller. Then we need to list um, the uh, controller that is going to be uh, controlling it. So this controller here is the one we're looking for. In this case, it's uh, right barrow dot position dot controller. And again, if I evaluate that, it's a position list on there. We're actually looking for the first one in the list. Uh, if you remember, we set that up so that the uh, first controller is the one that's active. It's the one we're animating on. And the second controller had the script controller in it that was um, stopping the first controller from going uh, too far so it didn't go out of bounds here. So that's the um, position X, Y, Z. And if we want, we could either uh, list uh, X underscore uh, position for this, or we can actually do it by iteration again, and we can say it's the first controller in that controller, and that re uh, returns the X position, and again, we need the controller. So, in Max, you have to state that you need that controller, and it's returning the Bezier flow controller here, and so it's going to say react to this, and now when we evaluate this piece of code, uh, what it's going to do is it's going to uh, loop through and it's going to um, apply a, a float reactor controller to each of the tracks that we want to control and it's immediately going to um, add that here into our um, reactions. And I'll just evaluate that and you can see now that uh, under our X we have all those float reaction controllers and if we take a look uh, again under um, uh, under here, you can see that each one has a float reaction controller added to it. Now what you want to do is you want to save this uh, uh, piece of code 
and we'll be able to reuse it to set up the left side of the character just by um, changing uh, right brow to left brow and um, changing which um, morph channels are actually being accessed. It'll be uh, number 19 and on that we'll need and we'll do the exact same thing. We'll just be able to run that and it'll add it all in here. So now what we have is we have, of course, those too many states that have been added and we'll want to go through and we'll want to just remove those states out of here and make sure that we add them all back into the first state so it looks nice and neat and clean. So now let's set this up so it works. Uh, we'll start with a Y and we'll start with up and what we want to do now is just simply add a new uh, reaction and we want to look at uh, the first three should be all the up so we will set all those and you should see the brow going up on each one of them see the brow going up on every single one of them and we'll also set now uh, one for the bottom so I'll just go down to the uh, uh, let's take it down to a down position here so it's all the way down at the bottom and same thing I'm going to say add a new one and we'll make the bottom three value of 100 and you can see that it's now pushed them all the way down so we should have a reaction going all the way up and all the way down but now of course side to side has no effect it's just going to uh, leave it as it is so what we need to do now is we need to set up the X position so that it uh, basically counters that. Let me just do some uh, new animation on this. I'm going to get rid of that. Uh, turn on animate. I'll push it to the inside and then to the outside. And let's just zero back out again here. And we'll take it to the bottom the same thing here. We'll take it to the inside and we'll take it to the outside. So now what we need to do is we're just going to set it up so that when X is all the way over to one side uh, it's going to pull down some of these values because these in the X these are all these are all the second controller in the list in Y they're all the first controllers so I'm going to add a new one here and when it's up and it's over this way, we want to just find which one it is. So you can actually see that this is pulling it down as I pull this value down. And by the way, just clicking on one of these fields and uh, left clicking and dragging, you can actually change the numbers quite slow with my capture on. But uh, you can see that it's pulling this, um, the outside right down. So what we actually want is, is we want negative 100 because right now it's actually at a positive 100 uh, on the first controller this one being at negative 100 is completely countering as one goes up the other goes down when you turn it side to side so you can actually completely counter it the next one uh, should be the middle of it now if you wanted what we could do is we could actually do say a negative 50 in this one um, so that's it's only half of the uh, middle one is allowed to happen so now when we actually change it you can see it's actually scrubbing down the outside of the eye. And if we wanted, we could even just leave it at zero. So we can play around with this and actually get different, you know, different um, shapes happening just by playing around with our weights of our uh, reaction manager. Um, and this would be it completely down and just leaving the uh, very inner one in. Um, I think it might be best if we left this at about negative 50. Now once we go around to the uh, on the outside, exact opposite, just add the state again and we're going to do the exact opposite for this one. Um, the inner one should go down to negative 100. That's going to take the inner one down. And same thing here, negative um, uh, 50. And what we've got now is is that something like this. Now, when it's up in the middle, what we might want to have uh, is that we may want to actually set it up so that when it's in the middle 
position, the outer ones don't go up all the way. So we could actually have the outer ones down a little bit, just pushing the middle one up. And the same thing, we can set up a, a reaction for that. So when this is uh, zero, which it is currently, the, uh, this, this one's the, the zero value one on the left to right, we don't need to add another one for it. Um, what we can do is we can go in and um, taper down the outside. Again, it could literally be, oops, keep adding too many zeros there, 50% uh, of the um, outside ones. And you'll get that nice rolling effect as you roll it from side to side as it rolls back and forth. Again, it's a matter of going in and adjusting the uh, um, targets a little bit, playing with the weights, and getting the right uh, mix of them to uh, to work with. And it looks like I put five, negative 500 again in here, so negative 50. Um, and you can see it blend nicely from one to the other. Or again, we could have left these uh, sitting at zero. Uh, or uh, negative 100 and so that it's only the very middle one that goes up and then we have a true sort of roll from one to the other and you're getting this nice blend from uh, as the uh, control goes across the brow does this nice blending from uh, from side to side now exactly the same thing needs to happen on the bottom uh, of the uh, of it so we've already got um, those set up and what we can do now is we can go down to the bottom and now we're going to have to add new reactions for new states for uh, for when it's down so now that it's in its uh, direct down position I'm going to add a new state and this is for the uh, for the Y and each of these are currently sitting at uh, a value of uh, of 100 in the down so they're all being pulled down just like we set up and of course we've got that problem from side to side sorry and we didn't need to add that new state I uh, completely forgot that we had already added it here we were dealing with this one and then this one so now with the X we need to add the exact opposite here now again we don't actually have to add more states because we've got the side to side action here with the center uh, position we've got the um, uh, you know, uh, position to the uh, inside and position to the outside. So we really just need to set up the rest of the uh, controls the way we want. So as the control goes in to the inside, we want the outside ones to go back up again. And that outside one would happen to be here. I'll just go and uh, set the number in. May not be that one. Go ahead and uh, try and find them. Oops, I'm on the wrong one, of course. So I'm making the same errors. I'm sure you will. There it is there. <laughs> um, so it's the uh, third one down, negative 100. There it is. It takes the uh, corner of the brow up. And then, of course, the middle one uh, will maybe one again at a negative 50. So it pushes that up a little bit. Let, uh, let's that go back up. And now same thing when it's the other way. Sorry. And now we're back to the, uh, to the uh, bottom state here. Uh, opposite way around, we might want the middle one to be negative 50. The bottom one now to push the uh, inner one uh, up, um, and then we can go back and actually adjust our um, our pose at zero, the one in between, and actually allow the uh, either side to um, not be used. So we'll set it up as the same as the top one. So the uh, you can see it's just pushing down the middle of the uh, brow and then of course it'll push down the uh, inner roll it to the outer and as I go up it rolls it up into the uh, outer up and then rolls it along nicely and you get this nice roll around it and again now it's a matter of going in and playing with your targets and again playing with your weights but now you can actually roll the whole control around and get a really nice roll on the uh, eyebrows Again, this is one of those controls. It's it's great, but it doesn't allow you to do certain things. You might want to be able to go completely up on the outside, completely down on the inside, and get a real extreme going. And this might be an override control, an added control, or having uh, three separate sliders just straight up and down to control the outer, the middle, and the inner.
and sometimes going with more controls like that is better. This one control is cool, it, need, it really demos well, um, but the fact of the matter is, is it can actually be a little bit limiting if you do it this way. So having three controls uh, for the different positions along the brow may actually give you a better uh, overall control for the animator. It uh, becomes uh, twofold though. Does the animator actually have the time to animate all of them and control all of them? Uh, is it something they'd prefer just to have one because you're doing a series and it's not you know you just don't have time to do all the, uh, the posing you want and uh, th this is good enough? Um, or is it a feature film where you've got uh, uh, you know only have to uh, produce uh, three seconds of animation a week and uh, you can take the time to go ahead and uh, animate it to do exactly what you need? So it's up to you and what you actually need. I'm going to go ahead and I want to set up the left side now so the other side of the character works as it should. I've now gone ahead and uh, finished off the left eye. You can now see that it works the same way. I use the um, script by just adjusting the, uh, the name and again the controllers to add them all. So I changed to left brow and renamed this control to left brow. Um, I added my targets uh, to Morpher and uh, of course they started from uh, slot 19 to 24. So I changed, just changed my for loop so it looped through the correct ones for the left side. And I ran it twice, uh, once uh, basically working on um, the second controller on the morpher for the x-axis of the uh, control object and then changed it around for the y-axis of the uh, control object, having to control the first uh, uh, controller on the uh, morpher. Uh, probably not a good idea to have done them backwards that way, but uh, I didn't consider actually writing the script ahead of time. But essentially, that's uh, and I just ran this twice, and that set all my, um, my my states in there so that everything was set up. And then I just went through and adjusted the state uh, state of everything for the uh, given point in time. So it was it was it worked the same way this one did. So that was pretty easy for doing something like your eyes and your uh, eyelids is very simple. You can copy up another one of these to make the control and then for the uh, width of the control it's best to make it just point, uh, zero, 0.01 and then you've got a control that goes up and down so the eyelids were very simple I just simply made a, a closed from the top and a closed from the bottom and I made two spinners uh, that represented those um, and just had them side by side for uh, top and bottom of the right eye uh, eyelids for the pupils uh, we'd originally uh, set these up so the people were uh, being driven by a spinner in the uh, control panel when we set the eye up. Um, I again just copied another one out, called it pupil, but did the instead of hooking it up to the spinner, I hooked it up to this uh, sliding up and down. Uh, so again, I just did it with Reaction Manager. So I'm sure you can figure those out there uh, from what we've done. They're probably the easiest way to set things up. 